Welcome back. We know that you have been with us uh, for a majority of the day and we appreciate it. We have gotten such wonderful feedback from your masterclass. We have gotten wonderful feedback from your interaction with us this morning. And now we're all looking forward to you bringing it home on this final main stage uh, as we turn it over to you. Because what we do know for a fact is that all of our churches are looking for ways to ensure that not only are they there physically, but that their presence is felt. And a part of that uh, feeling is gonna be how we uh, share the good news, not only in terms of the message, but the good news in terms of ministry and service that is happening in and through that church. Dr. Bridgeforth, I'm going to give you a minute or two before we turn it to Jasmine completely. What do I need to add to that? Because see, minding our spiritual business and sacred duties encompassed how we share uh, these four major components that we've covered throughout the day through the lens of the Black church. Not that it was exclusively for the Black church, but it is for every church. And I believe we've done that today. And I believe that as Jasmine rounds this out for Ross, that she's going to bring it all the way home for Ross. So what are the words that you want to share before we turn it to her? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Daniels. And thank you, Jasmine, for uh, continuing to drop knowledge on us, inspire us, and to lead us lead us forward. I, I think the piece here uh, that, that's just reverberated throughout the day is relevance, right? It's really just tagging into what's relevant uh, to us and for us and, and how we make who we are and what we have to offer relevant to those that we believe or those that we say we're trying to reach and to connect with. So uh, I'm grateful that that's been a through line. And as Jasmine uh, begins to share with us now, that's, that's what I'm uh, hopeful for and uh, looking, looking for in our time. So thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, so I know that I haven't had an opportunity to meet with and speak with everyone. Um, if I happen to miss a, miss a question, um, I want to let everyone know that an email will be going out to everyone who is in attendance today with a calendar link, um, which is going to give you an opportunity to sit with me um, for free consultation so that I can answer the questions that are specific to your organi organization because we simply just won't get through everything. I'm also going to be sending out a few one sheeters that will certainly help um, your business um, in some of the things that I'm going to speak about today. Um, for those who haven't had the pleasure of meeting me yet today, my name is Jasmine Smith. I am the owner of 757 Hive, also known as the Hive Experience Agency, better known as the Brand Experience Experts. Um, I do have a focus on brand experience and customer experience. That's really where my niche is. Um, what is brand experience and customer experience? Um, and in customers, when I say customers, I mean your audience, um, your audience. Your customer experience describes how users, how a customer or your clients will interact with you, how they feel about doing business with you, what that looks like, their perception of you um, is going to be, I'm sorry, yeah, not blah, I'm sorry. Your brand experience is the, as their perception of you. Your customer experience is really so much um, interacting with you, engaging with you, how accessible you are, um, what value you provide and if you're in alignment, whereas the brand experience is really about how people feel about you, their perception of you. Um, again, it's really about how do I feel? Do I feel supported? Do I feel valued? Do I feel like my voice is heard? And so what that translates uh, to in churches, in my just in my opinion, what that translates to is, how are you connecting with your community? Why would someone choose to come to your church versus someone else's? And I've done a, I've actually done a lot of thinking just today as it pertains to the church. And if anyone knows me and knows me well, they know that my platform is based in truth. 
And so the very first thing that I'd like to address, and I, we, we don't have to go into detail, is I want to address the, the pain. Because any successful business, any successful organization knows that when you're able to address the pain points and you're able to fix a problem, you're providing a solution, you're providing value, and you are creating loyal customers who will continue to return and who will continue to refer you. Are you addressing the pain? And I, I can't see the chat. I'm going to pull the chat up on my end to ensure that I am getting all of the, okay. Um, please feel free while we're here. I know we don't have a lot of time. I want to be able to address specifically some of your pain points and what problems you're solving. So please feel free to put a question, a comment, a suggestion, in the chat and I'll be sure to be taking a look at the chat so that I can answer or address any of those concerns. So again, back to what problem are you fixing? What pain point? And, and when you take a look at that, take a look at the past. So take a look at the past and let's talk about why you have maybe lost members in the past. The next thing is are you in alignment, right? What is your brand? What is the culture of your organization? What is the perception? What is the feeling of being a part of your, a, a member of your congregation? And I know that there was a, some talks in one of our classes earlier about the terminology that we use. So if there's a different terminology <laughs> that you all are more familiar with, um, I'm going, I'm going, you, ha you all have to forgive me. I'm, I'm so wired to saying uh, customer or client or audience. And you have to know that the people who are members of your church, they are technically your customer. They are your audience. They are who you are providing a value or a, a service, a product to. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Sherry. Um, so what is your brand? Um, also, what is your mission, your vision, your values? Does your leadership, are you in alignment with your mission, your vision, and your values? For many churches, the vision might be the same, but the mission and the values at each, each particular church, it may very well change. It may be different. The services they offer, the demographics in which they serve. Yes, uh, the demographic in which they serve are you in alignment are you accessible are you inclusive are you a safe space is there value those are the things that we must take a look at when we're talking about breaking down a system and fixing something that needs to be repaired how are you engaging your audience what programs do you have in place? So I'm going to go down. I'm going to I'm going to go down the list, and I'm going to break all of those things down. And so when we talk about uh, we uh, we already uh, covered the brand, what the brand is, and your brand is the culture, the perception, and the feeling. Now, when we talk about the mission, the vision, and the values being in alignment, what is your mission? What does your mission look like? Who does your mission serve? How do you become accessible to them to bring them value? What does accessibility mean? Accessibility means that are you open for business? Do you have in-person services? Do you have other means of providing that service? And that could be via a Zoom, be, via some type of a platform that will allow multiple people to participate. Are you on social media? Are you encouraging all throughout the week or is it is it just a Sunday thing? Are you providing education and information consistently? Now, when it comes to the social media platforms, yes, you have your Facebook, you have uh, which in Facebook is preferred for an older generation. It's important that you know the demographics of each of the platforms that you're using and how to use and connect 
um, with your audience on each of those platforms. Facebook is the most popular platform and was going to have an older generation of users, 25 and up. Um, Facebook also is going to allow you to have longer conversations versus some of the other platforms. They're going to have a restriction on how many characters you can use when you are posting. But Facebook is a great place to engage. Facebook actually encourages engagement, which is why groups are so popular. So a really good thing that you can do for your organization is if you already don't have it is to create a Facebook group that allows for your existing members and possibly um, members who will join in the in the future because people who are current people who are current who are, have already experienced and are already familiar and aligned with your organization, they'll be able to share um, with friends and family members. And I think that that's a really great way to introduce people slowly to your organization because there are some out there who don't have a church home. And, and I don't mean a physical church home, meaning that there's not a place in their heart where they feel comfortable and they need to be guided. There was a question asked earlier about um, uh, different people being at different points in their journey, um, in their understanding. Um, there are some people who at the at the drop of a dime, they can regurgitate uh, several Bible quotes. They know the scripture um, by heart. And I know that for myself, even I've been in I've been in situations where someone will just shout out a scripture and, you know, they'll say, you know, look something, you know, and I'll and you know, I went I went to church with my grandmother when I was growing up. I'm pretty sure as a child, I knew many of those scriptures. I could, if someone said a scripture, I could um, regurgitate it back. Or they would say the scripture, and I could tell them exactly where that scripture was found. But as an adult, I can tell you personally that I've moved, not moved away, but I haven't studied. Um, I haven't studied the terms on a regular basis to know and that for some it could be uncomfortable so we're talking about fear and shame and also just being uncomfortable so that moves into a, the that moves into the accessibility peach piece <laughs> because um how are people able to communicate with you and do they feel safe to communicate with you do they feel safe to share with you where they are do they feel safe to share what they're uh dealing with what they're struggling with what they're unhappy about are you meeting them where they are so in this field a lot of times um, there's good intention but the impact is what's more important so you may intend to share a message you may intend to give good feedback you may intend to help but are you helping and there's nothing like having someone who is experienced in experience if you're not experienced um being able to prov not provide delegate <laughs> that's the word delegate we can't do it all we can't control it all giving up some of that control and allowing others to do what they do best is going to be great for your organization it's great for your life when you're able to delegate um the next one is uh, communication. How are you communicating? And communication goes along with the accessibility. Um, communicating, is, is that in person? How are you communicating in person? In writing, um, are you giving flyers? Are you giving a brochure? Is there something that you're printing, a bulletin every single week? What information are you sharing? Some people prefer for information to be passed to them verbally. Some people prefer for that information to be handed to them in paper form. Some people like to write. Some people prefer email. Email is a great way uh, to keep in contact with your congregation and your members. Um, but text messaging is going to be probably the number one thing that I would recommend, given there are so many different platforms out there that allow you to keep in contact with your with your congregation, your members. Um, text message, the text messaging platform is um, is going to have 
uh, a higher engagement than any other form because it's going directly to someone's phone. And I highly recommend using a platform that gives you an actual phone number versus those platforms that give you four, five, six characters in the phone number because if you have an actual um, 10 digit, I'm sorry, is someone saying something? No, that's me, uh, Jasmine. Okay. Uh, because I wanted to, uh, while you were right there, because that is so important. You have said that three times today. And, and I, I believe that all of us are listening. And so <clears throat> I think Dr. Ted Smith asked earlier today, are there resources that can help us? Because while I know that texting is important, because I know I'm dealing with multiple generations, are there, uh, is there a resource that can help us with content that so that you know we can keep it to those 140 characters so that we can really get our point across is there a, a tutorial or is that something you're going to cover through your one-on-one -on -one? i can cover that through my one-on-one -on -one for those who need it and once they decide who and how they are going to engage that's very important knowing who you are engaging with is going to allow you to understand how you need to engage with them um, because there's, every demographic is different and how they communicate is different. Their language is different. And so you need to also understand that when you're talking to them, where are you talking to them? Because the way that people communicate on TikTok is going to be a lot different than people who are communicating via Instagram or via Facebook. Um, there are several platforms out there. There's several CRM systems, actually, and that uh, the sorry, the one cheaters that I'm going to send and they will have via email, it's going to have the information. It's going to have some links to different organizations that you can use, different companies, different products that are there. Having a great CRM system like Entreport is very helpful. A system like Entreport is a full CRM system. Not only will it help you keep all of your contacts in one place, you can actually keep a record of every single person that interacts with your organization via the CRM. You can keep all of their contact information. You can connect contacts. You can put notes in there. You have all of their information, their payment information. You can create a membership if you want them to automatically pay tithes. Um, they can do that through that. Um, it's You can do classes through Entreport. So if you want, if, if you wanted to, for instance, do a training, or you wanted to do a series, you wanted to teach about a certain thing, an introduction, or you wanted to speak to a certain group, you actually can go in and you can create webinars, courses inside of Entreport. Entreport has, uh, can manage your emails. They also can send out text messages on behalf. They also can, they also have social media manager. They have, um, templates that you can use. You can use their templates. You can also use, uh, templates from other sources. And there's so there's a bunch of different um, platforms that you can use. For instance, Canva is really good. Canva is a really great tool to use. And it it's you can go in, you can personalize almost anything in Canva, anything that's digital. Uh, you can make flyers, you can make business cards, logos, letterheads, video, Videos. everything. In and even even for <laughs> my generation, I can maneuver it. And, and yeah. I want you to know, while you were doing that, Dwayne Stinson actually put into the chat uh, box uh, the um, website for Entreport. So for those of you who are looking and listening, please know, pay attention to your chat box because we're putting in the websites as, as uh, uh, Jasmine has given us uh, you know, resources. Please, we want you to keep up keep up with all of these because we're going to try to capture all of them to make sure that they're on the website but i want you to keep going because one of the things that you said is that you need to have a system mm -hmm. where once you uh do the the what i call heavy lifting then the system works on your behalf right so like the entreport you know once you get the heavy lifting done, all of the contacts in there, then it's a matter of what? Managing. Am I correct about that? 
Exactly. And the thing is, these all of these systems, they have great customer support. So mm -hmm. even if you're not technologically savvy, you're able to go into Entreport. You have someone that's assigned to you who can assist you with any task that you need. They'll typically stay on the phone with you. They can do a Zoom call. They can share screens and they can walk you through doing almost anything in Entreport. It's really a click and point, click and type. Um, and it's amazing. It has great pricing in Entreport. Um, but for some people who don't want to spend the money, Entreport, if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm on a plan with Entreport and I want to say I pay maybe 120 or 130 a month in, able, in order to have Entreport. But again, it's a full customer management system completely. Mm -hmm. Completely. So I, be I guess, you know, Jasmine, right there, you know, uh, you're you're bringing us to a point where we have to recognize that as we move forward, there is going to be a cost. Every resource that we get is not going to be free of charge. Nope. And I think Facebook may have spoiled people because, you know, you could join Facebook and you don't have to pay anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if we really want to move forward and really want to have the kind of impact that we have, then we are gonna to have to figure out the kind of investment that we're willing to make. Am I am I am am I off base or am I on on track? You are you are correct. Now, so yes, you have Entreport. Are there other options that are le least less inexpensive than Entreport? Yes. There's Kartra, there's Keep. Um, there's a few other entities, and again, this this will be in the email that uh, they will receive. Mm -hmm. So I will list all of those different organizations um, so that people have access, so they don't have to remember it here. But right. there are several other uh, systems that exist that may be inexpensive. Also, a lot of these programs do have a free side. They have a complimentary side. Once you get active and you get to using it a lot of times you can just upgrade to the next package because you'll have a better understanding of your needs. But as far as managing your contacts, um, it's a good place to start. And then there are other, there are several platforms out there. Uh, we talked about the text messaging because text messaging is, it has over 90% engagement rate when we're talking about text messages. People are more likely to open, read, and respond to a text message than they are to an email. Um, Absolutely. There are some texting platforms out there that are in the $10 and $20 range, $10 to $30, actually. There are several companies out there. The only difference is when those come through, they're typically coming through with a four, five, or six digit phone number. And a lot of times that's marked as spam mm -hmm. for your phone because there's so many providers out there. So your members may or may not be getting um, the notifications, but also they may not look at it because it, they don't know what it says. And some of the, the some companies out there, it texts from a different number every single time they get a mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. And so if someone is, if someone um, saves that particular number in their phone and says, hey, this is my church, I wanna make sure that I don't think that this is a coupon or an advertisement or spam, I wanna make sure I get it. And so consistency is key. And so, you don't show up in the same places all the time with the same message. I'm sorry. So no, no, no. So Jasmine, you made me think about something and I'm gonna ask Dr. Cedric Bridgeforth if he would come back in because this is very, very important because in just a few months, our teams are gonna go into, a, you know, into planning sessions, our finance team. So when we're looking at resources, what you've just said is that while you may find something that is cheaper, you really do need to investigate if it's better. Mm -hmm. Did I hear you correctly? You you heard me loud and clear. Okay. And, and so what we are particularly as pastors and leaders of the church, we have to be very um, careful about what we recommend to say for our finance teams. Mm -hmm. uh, to our trustees in terms of the use of our buildings and how we will, you know, have to look at how we repurpose those during this time so that the building can be in full use. So Dr. Bridgeforth, let me turn it to you for just a second before 
we run out of our, out of our time because she really hit up on something I think that is very important for us because I think a lot of times we look for what is cheap versus what we really need that will get the job done. Yes, that is true. And I think one, <clears throat> one way to address that is to look at what, what you already have. Uh, I know, uh, Jasmine, I, I can speak to this as we moved into our COVID protocols and we're no long, longer able to worship together in our buildings. We really wanted to do, mo do more by way of our online giving and digital platform giving, which you know the church had been for like 10 years trying to get people to do that, right? And so then it's like, oh, well, how are we going to do this? Well, we looked and the service we were using to um, catalog all of our giving came with the free app. We had just never, nobody ever checked on it. Nobody had ever accessed it. And so, so it's like, oh, okay. So we're already paying for that. Same thing when we looked at how um, our digital, um, our robocall thing that we were using, it's like, I wanted to go to text messaging. And I was like, I wonder if they offered texting. Well, it was included in the plan we already had. So you get a call, you get a text message, and it does come from uh, the same number. So they know when that 405 area code number rings to them, they don't know anybody in Oklahoma. They know that's the church calling them. So they just laugh about it. But you can also set it up so that it comes from my phone number. Don't recommend that because I did that and I got a bunch of return calls with people saying I missed your call. But, um, you know, but the audit, I, I found that helpful going through actually having our finance team audit all the services that we already paid for to see what we were paying for that we were not already using, right? And so we were able to maximize those things. And then that freed up the thinking, you know, we were thinking we're going to have to add all these other services. But in fact, we had much of what we already needed. We just weren't using it. And once we figured out how much we were saving, then we had money to then boost up our Zoom account, you know, to the, you know, 500 capacity and some other things that, that we needed to do to do all of our streaming. So the audit, I can't stress that enough. Absolutely. And thank you, Dr. Bridgeforth. And, and Jasmine, I apologize. It's just that when you're hitting certain points, we want to make sure that, you know, for the folks that are online today, that they hear what you are saying, because you are hitting it, uh, you know, just uh, on point. I mean, you're just knocking it out of the ballpark because these are the things that we need to be thinking about. Because right now, for most churches, we are looking for where can we shave the cost? You know, exactly. where can we reduce costs? And then we're looking at what must we invest in? You know, a lot of churches don't really think about a consultant that can come in and help you do that preliminary work, even if it's for short term, we don't really think about that. You know, we really think that, um, you know, that's just going to come, you know, out of the air, like, you know, off the money tree, you know, money trees. Do you have a money tree in your backyard? <laughs> I wish. We just think it's going to float down like manna from heaven. But <clears throat> what we have to do is be willing to invest in our future and then we have to work that out and figure out where are we able to do that so i don't want to take up any more of your time but what i want to do is remind the participants if you have a question for jasmine i need you to start typing those in because in just a minute we're going to start winding down because we have to and i'm going to have to get those to her so that she can answer and or respond to you. So I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be monitoring, monitoring it. And Jasmine, I'm going to go off. Dr. Cedric probably will go off. We're going to give the stage back to you. And then we're going to be coming back before we end so that you can answer whatever they ask. Well, thank you. I think that was a, I, I think that what he said about auditing and analyzing what you already have prior to you spending any money is extremely important because sometimes we go looking for something that we already have and you can use that in all aspects of your life 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes we really do go looking for things that we already have. So um, one of the things that I said in the beginning was checking with your current members to see what they have to offer. And then also deciding whether or not uh, the current leadership that you have in place in those positions, people who are running programs within your organization, what value do they bring to the organization? And are they in alignment and can they assist? And when I say that, I also work with a lot of nonprofits. And when we talk about bringing leaders in, we always think strategy. Is this person a good person and a good fit? Do they believe in our mission? Yes, but what else do they bring to the table? Who else do they know? What other partnerships do they have? What other, what other skills do they possess um, that can assist our organization in moving our mission forward? Those are things that we must consider. (laughs) So yes. Um, But when it comes to platforms, there are several platforms to get your information out there, knowing how each of the platforms platforms work and who's using those platforms is very important. Knowing who you are, or not who you are, but who your audience is and where you can meet them out is also very important. Now, we've already talked about in person, of course, in writing via, via email, Um, the text messages, but now I want to talk a little bit about social media. And again, you will be receiving an email that has um, the social media platforms and who you should be reaching out to on each of those platforms and how. Um, So I'm not going to spend too much time in that. But um, if you're not already doing so, please get a Facebook group. Start a Facebook group and that's going to allow your members to not only talk to and support each other, but also for them to invite other people in. It's going to give them an easy of what we call a warm introduction to your organization prior to them committing. Um, The programming that you have, how is that programming being shared? Yes, you have platforms like Zoom. Zoom does have a free Um, a free package, but then if you want to upgrade so that you can have more, um, more engagement, you can do that. But you also can use Facebook. Facebook is a free resource. Facebook actually has integrated a bunch of new things. So they have the groups, of course, which are the groups are very extensive and there's a lot of things that you can do in the groups you can also create courses inside of facebook groups you can create groups inside of facebook groups Uh, um, you can um, you can create rooms in facebook Mm -hmm. Um, it's something like a zoom feature where you can create a room in facebook so let's say um, you wanted to provide services or a program or a a special event or a group like a support group or something or a learning group, you can do that via Facebook um, in one of Facebook's integrations like the rooms. Or you can just do Facebook Live and make sure that when you're using Facebook Live that you have a business Facebook page. And anything that you do on any platform, you must ensure that you are consistent because they do work on algorithms. So if you're not posting on a regular basis, on a consistent basis, Facebook is not going to show your content to your audience. And that goes for Facebook, Instagram, to all of the platforms. If you do not post on a regular basis, if you do not engage on a regular basis, Face these social media platforms will not show your content to your audience. What does it look like to engage? How are you currently engaging? So now I'm going to post a question and I'm going to give about 30 seconds to anyone who wants to answer in the chat. How are you currently engaging potential and current members of your church?
Okay, so um, so far we have current information, i.e. COVID-19. Um, someone else said email, text. Debbie said email, text, Facebook, free conference calls, and phone calls. Okay. Home visits. The reason why I asked that question, it goes back to knowing who your audience is and meeting them where they are. How do you connect with them? Because you may be the person who likes to talk on the phone. They may be the person who likes to answer text messages. You may be the person who likes home visits. They may be the person that says, no, send me an email. So I would highly recommend asking your current members how they prefer to have communication sent to them. What's their preference? How would they like to engage with your brand? If you don't know and what you're doing, if, if you don't know, and if what you're doing is not connecting with your audience, ask them, what is it that you need? What could we do better? What would you like to see? How can we help you? How could we be of service? Do you have a way for people to anonymously address their concerns? Also, we use yard signs. We are downtown church and there is some foot traffic. Okay. I wanna share something. Birthday cards, holiday cards. Okay, all of that is engagement with your existing audience. So I wanna address two things. The first thing that, we're, um, that I would like to address is maintaining and engaging with your existing audience, how you do that and what what's coming up in the comments those are great ways to engage with your existing audience but when we're talking about growth i'd like to ask you how are you growing what's working and what's not working and while you type that in the chat what i will say is that you have to ask yourself and now we're going to be a little a little truth is going to come out here Ask yourself why people are leaving the church. You may not partnering with local schools. Okay. I I, I want to give real honest and transparent here. Um, I'm of course I'm a black woman and I'm a millennial as well. I was raised in the church. And I am someone who I like to hear the opinions of other people. I like to address their concerns. And from my perspective, one of the reasons why people are pulling away um, from the church is because there's a trust factor there. It doesn't feel like a safe space. There's a lot of shame and fear that comes with joining or being a part of a church. In one of the classes earlier today, someone talked about how do we how do we separate ourselves from being a club? We're not a sorority. And my answer to that was, are you a club? Is that the culture of your organization? Because remember, your brand is how people feel about you and your perception. You may not intend to be a club, but if that's what people assume that that's what you are, then that's what you are, a club. And one of the things that I said was, well, when you're thinking about the culture of your organization, your members, and the perception that you wanna have, the legacy that you wanna leave, are you a club, are you a cult, or are you a community? If the audience that you intend to reach is not engaging with you, you have to ask yourself why. And are you solving their problems? Are you fixing their hurt? 
Are you adding value to their lives? Are you presenting something to them that they don't have? You have to present yourself to your audience and to the community in a way where they feel that they can't live without you. They need to have you in their lives. And so what types of things can we do and change around that? Because you can have all of the systems in place. You can have your text messages, you can do, you can rebrand your organization, you can put the, the, the right, um, you can find the right stock images to, to load to your social media with great quotes about life. But what are you actually doing? Is it intentional? Are you changing lives? Are you what they say you are? Can you back up? what you're saying and what you're doing. And that's very important to any brand. All churches are not the same. And right now, a lot of people are saying, well, I don't wanna go to church. Well, what's it for? What are, I, can, I can do this instead. I can do this, 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 this. What is the value to being a part of your organization? What are they getting from you that they can't get somewhere else? And again, are you fixing the problem? Are you hurting? Are you helping? Are you hurting? Are you providing any value? And really, those are some of the things that we need to think about alongside all of the things that we need to do to make sure that everything is running properly with the systems and the social media and the things that we're doing in the community. All and our of program. that. Yes, all Lord. Of that. Well, you know, Jasmine, I have one last question for you because we are winding down and unfortunately, uh, we have about eight minutes left, but I do want to get this in because, um, uh, you know, we started the day and we had to swap you with Dr. Lewis and we flipped the times mm -hmm. and we didn't recognize how significant that would be because we really needed you to end the day. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. We really did. But here's the question that is coming because see, this is challenging. It says my upcoming challenge is that the congregation currently starts the in-person worship at 945 and then waits until 10 a.m. to start the live stream. And the rationale is to keep prayer concerns private. And I'm not sure if they understand the negative impact of this church. Now, this is the pastor speaking. And I see this bifurcation model as a slight against the stream audience, or am I mistaken? And, and I, I, I guess that really is a good question because, you know, at, at this point during the COVID-19, some people are home because they have to be. Mm -hmm. And then others are and can be in person because they can be. So do we do we do we change the way we share the prayer concerns so that we're not uh, 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 intruding upon people's privacy, or what do we do? Because what we want to do is make sure that both the in-person and the the hybrid, the technology audience that they all feel as though everybody's included in that congregation. Dr. Cedric, uh, weigh in on, on that before Jasmine responds because I may not be articulating it correctly, but I think that's what I read in his question. Yeah, I think part of the issue is uh, we assume because we're all in the same room that that's a closed space and we know it's not, right? And so I don't know why we would treat one any differently than the other. You're speaking into a sp public space uh, with other people who can take whatever they hear and do whatever they're gonna do with it. Uh, the way we've dealt with that in our own context uh, in the church that I currently serve is we use the chat feature. And because we also stream and people can go there and uh, check in on demand, we have a link there that goes to a Google doc, you know, where people can input things that they only want me or our pastoral staff to access, but everything else, celebrations, praises, concerns, we encourage people to put it in the chat, right? And that way people share what they wanna share. It's in the chat. We're not speaking it out you know, to the whole world, 
But what is what does show up in the chat is you know it's it's public for that group. The problem I have with starting um, worship in one space and then pulling people in once it's already down the road, it's like it's the effect of when you get to church late and you're held in the narthex in the lobby for those non. Uh, Methodist folks, when you're held out there and you can hear the music or you can hear the prayers going on, but you're being held outside, it's like you're being penalized somehow and you're never fully apart because people like me are wondering, what am I missing or what did I miss, right? And so how do I catch up? And so I think, you know, playing more to the common experience builds community more so than starting it out with uh, us against them, um, you know, can just help in the long run. What are your thoughts, Jasmine? So I absolutely agree. And I think the Google, the Google Forms is a great idea because they can choose what information they share and it's not public. It's going to go to a specific um, inbox or, you know, the Google Drive folder. Also, um, if I'm you on mute. Jasmine, I'm sorry. Let me interrupt you for just a minute because this has gotten so interesting and so hot and juicy that I've been notified that we do have less than five minutes. But here's the thing. If people simply refresh their browser, it will let them stay in the session. Okay. And so I know that we want you to answer that because we all want to hear what that answer is going to be depending on the plugin on the website that you're using, whether it's Wix um, or one of the other platforms, you actually can put, um, you can actually can embed or place um, a comment box right on your website that will allow someone to go in and put their information in without giving any of their personal contact details. That's the way that you can do, that's something that you can do as an anonymous way. Um, I, again, I'm going back to using the free features on Facebook that if you would like for people to know what's going on, we're talking about celebrations, birthdays, things of that nature, Facebook groups is another really great way to engage with the audience and, uh, you know, you can engage with your audience and your audience can engage with other people who are like-minded, who are nearby, who they're, when things open back up, I'm gonna see you in person and I can't wait to hug you. Facebook groups is an amazing feature for you to use and it's absolutely free in a lot of the, I mean, you can do all of your engagement, you can integrate it right into Facebook all by itself. Um, and I would highly recommend going into, oh, I'm sorry, something came in, the prayer concern may be a concern that someone else is experiencing, therefore would be a blessing to others, just my thought. Um, I think the user is the one who gets to choose whether or not they want their prayer, and, you know, if they want to remain anonymous or not, there are uh, lots of features. Um, just like he said, you can, um, you can use the Google form feature. You can use the chat on whatever um, whatever system you're using, um, whatever platform you're using to give your service. They typically have a chat feature. They can put it in put it in the chat. I do not agree with starting the worship at nine forty five and then only allowing the live stream to start at ten. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm not sure why they are doing that. If you don't know, ask. <laughs> bring it to their attention because someone may have made a suggestion and said, we'll just start it here. And they don't even know why they did that. Again, that, that there goes that intention versus the impact. Bring it up, bring it up and ask and say, and, and make a suggestion. Hey, I would really like for us to start at the okay. same time. <laughs> and why? All right. Well, Jasmine, I want to thank you so much because we're under a minute. Dr. Bridgeforth, I want to thank you because we have made it through the day. Uh, for all of you that have tuned in throughout uh, the day and viewed with us, we appreciate your presence.